On the news tonight, President Bola Tinubu inaugurates Tax Reform Committee. National Assembly forwards screened ministerial nominees list to President Bola Tinubu. Correspondents take a look at the plight of senior citizens in Nigeria. Good evening. Welcome to NTA Jabode News at 7. I'm Marolu Egonoa, and here are the details of the news. A presidential committee on fiscal policy and tax reforms set up a month ago has been inaugurated. At the inauguration in the State House, President Bola Tinubu says that this is part of steps to revamp the country's economy and the means to improve the lives of Nigerians. State House correspondent Musbao Dan Wahab reports. everybody knows that it's one country, it's our nation, and for it to work, we need that coordination. So one of the pillars of, these, of the assignment of the committee is the fiscal governance. That fiscal governance also says we have to ensure we have coordination um, in terms of within the federal government itself, and also horizontally or vertically, I should say, uh, with sub-nationals, particularly state, but also local government. And that's exactly what we hope to be able to do. Paying tax is enlightened self-interest, because that's the only way you can guarantee infrastructure. That's the only way you can guarantee that even the people that work for you in business places have the capacity to live a life that is livable. So on behalf of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria and the private sector, we like to pledge that our inclusion in this process is for good, for the good of the country. You know, we are always here to help in other ways uh, by sharing the experience and knowledge of what's worked in other countries. But in terms of, I would, could not be happier if Nigeria gets to the point where it's re generating enough of its own revenues in a way that's actually helping create the space for private investment, for families to flourish and does not need to come to the World Bank for financing. So one other thing that I thought was really important in how the mandate of this committee was set up is that it's not just about tax and revenues. It's really about inclusive growth, but also about fiscal policy in general, which means about the spending side. Senators transmitted to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu the list of 45 confirmed ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The senior special assistant to the president on National Assembly matters, Senate Senator Abdullahi Gumel, while briefing the press on the developments, also commended the Senate for suspending recess to screen and confirm the nominees. The, to, be, to come on board of the renewed hope of the president. The president is free from today to swear in the, the ministerial nominees and uh, give them portfolios so that the government can get going. On the assigning of portfolio, Senator Gumen explained that it is the prerogative of the president stressing that all the confirmed ministers are persons with proven track record of excellence. Key players in the justice sector are brainstorming on how Africa can take advantage of the African Free Trade Zone Agreement. This is the core of the 2023 African Bar Association Conference holding in Pretoria, South Africa. Daily Atsumbi reports. The Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is a legal instrument encouraging and promoting economic activities including movement of goods and services among state parties. The intent of the legal instrument is to ensure African countries trade among themselves without let or entrance. Available statistics have shown that the African Free Trade Area is the world's largest free trade area connecting 1.3 billion people across 55 countries who are members of the African Union. To show the commitment of the state parties to this legal instrument, 54 out of 55 countries have signed the agreement. As a way of ensuring the realization of the objectives of this agreement, 44 state parties 
have so far deposited their instrument of ratification with only for ratifying the protocol on the movement of people. Going by the projections in the agreement, the AFCFTA is one of the flagship projects of Agenda 2063 with gross domestic product valued at 3.4 trillion US dollars. As a way of promoting prompt resolution of disputes, the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement establishes a mechanism for the settlement of disputes. The judiciary that the business people who will be involved want is a judiciary that has integrity, is a judiciary that is competent, is a judiciary that has experience in their fields. Business people don't want people who are going to learn on the job. They want people who are ready because they've got businesses to run. A whole new opportunity has been provided. How can we grab it and make it work better for all? The first thing is knowledge of its design and what is expected of, from it, it being already in force. Participants at the ongoing 2023 African Bar Association Conference are of the view that political stability, judicial independence, and harmonized policies in tandem with African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement will go a long way in boosting multilateral trade on the continent. From Pretoria, Delhi, Atumbi, NTA News. Judge sworn in. Aboki has assured of commitments towards restoring the glory of the judiciary through enhanced and effective justice delivery. This was shortly after taking oath of office as the South Indigenous and the first female chief judge of the state. Abdullahi Mustafa has the details. He swear that I will be faithful. Self administration of, of, of office by Colonel State's number one judicial officer, DJ Aboki. The event attracted from within and outside the state senior members of the bench and bar. Also present are heads of law enforcement agencies in the state. The CDG's emergence as head of the judicial arm of Kano State Government is a reason to celebrate not just for being the first female to occupy the position, but her uprightness and professional accomplishments. Nothing that is certain is an important Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf joined the new chief judge's husband, a retired justice of the Supreme Court, Abdul Aboji, and other speakers in expressing confidence in our ability to take the state judiciary to greater heights. We want to continue to do our utmost best to meet all our obligations to the judiciary. DJ also promised to work towards sustaining cordial working relations among the three arms of government. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. Federal government's plan to strengthen micro, small and medium enterprises in the informal sector with 125 billion naira between July 2023 to March 2024 will have greater value if beneficiaries have requisite capacity for improved performance. Against this backdrop, the National Productivity Center is training consultants to deploy the needed performance to likely benefit businesses. Joseph Austin has the details. As a tired technician, Isabawa is likely to be one out of the one million nano business owners that would benefit from the 50 billion naira the federal government is intending to invest in the sector. Like this one now, you need to change it. So if they help me with that 50,000, I can still go and buy another one. Isabawa has high hopes, but the National Productivity Center is more concerned about building capacity of these small business owners to grow beyond the funding through enhanced performance and healthy competitiveness. And here, it holds a refresher training for its consultants. This refresher training is on productivity and quality improvement tools and techniques. These are tools and techniques which we deploy normally to the private sector. So we believe that we need to give technical support as our own palliative to this business community. It's also very important that we are able to track 
people's productivity, are able to measure it appropriately, and able to reward it. You find a way to even reduce the, the effect you have on the environment, and then reuse those materials that you think that are waste, so that you can actually improve your productivity. Overcoming productivity pitfalls, such as wastefulness, weakness in delivery time, alignment of target goals, and inadequate utilization of equipment are among take-home performance skills for the participants as small and medium-scale business owners and those in the informal sector like Isa Bawa awaits their impact. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. More encomiums are pouring in as eminent Nigerians elogize the outstanding qualities of the retired general manager of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA Abeokuta, Chief Mrs. Fumi Wakama, as she bows out of service after 35 years of an impactful journalism career. A retired Army General, Ekundayo Okpaleye, and wife of the former President Obasanjo, Chief Mrs. Bola Obasanjo, says she is pride of the Nigerian broadcast industry. Lekon Agbonde reports. The installation of Chief and Chief Mrs. Wakama as Fiwagboye and Yeye Fiwagboye of a Wu Kingdom in Abeokuta, Ogun State is a confirmation of treason that reflected in the turnout of dignities who testified to the character of the celebrants as personalities worthy of emulation. Wife of former Nigeria President Ulishegun Obasanjo, Mrs. Bola Obasanjo, and the chairman of the reception for the celebration of Fumi Wakama, retired General Ekundayo Paleye, advised the people to, to emulate a virtue of humility. Well, even from home, from your friends, in the church, in the school, or wherever, at work, or in club, wherever you are, at this time, you must look for. The event was a convergence of accomplished broadcasters who adorned the screen of NTA at one time or the other. The presence of chief executive officers of organizations and agencies give credence to how amiable Fumi Wakama is in human relations and dignity. When they opened the amount of money she made from Abiyokuta to NTA headquarters, um, nobody would not um, want to recognize such a person. She's so passionate about NTA, she will never ask you for anything personal. If at all she wants to ask you anything, please, what are you going to do for NTA? I think the title of who are doing is deeply fitting. Fitting because you put honor, dignity and integrity into what you did for the state government and the practice of journalism. She's not just um, a good worker, she's also a very good wife to our brother. And um, we just pray that the Lord continue to keep them. The celebrant is full of gratitude for the support she received from the people in the last 35 years. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agmode, NTA News. Health issues like diabetes, allergies, and certain childhood cancers in children can be avoided if breastfeeding of their babies in the first six months. Andre Daniels reports that the health experts emphasize this in Oshogbo as they educate residents on the benefits of breast milk. Breastfeeding mothers converged on the primary health care center in Isale Abara to learn something new about breast milk and breastfeeding. It's important you consume a lot of fluids, you know, a lot of um, semi-liquid foods like you have pap, you know. In fact, pap should be taken as in an as accompaniment in meals. Health experts and wife of the Ocean State Governor, to see my and always at the right temperature. It also lowers the risk of childhood diseases and mortality. Not seeing mothers, mothers that they are working. They should make sure they breastfeed their children well and whichever the crash that they will take their children to should be nearby to their offices so that it will enable them to go in there, breastfeed the child very well and at the same time go back to work. 
in case of any unforeseen circumstances, maybe during delivery the, the mother died, it is advocated that you look for a West nurse or a grandmother that can breastfeed. You understand? Or the sister, because we do not want the use of breast milk substitutes. Because breast milk substitutes have so many havoc, it causes for the child. It is expected that with awareness campaigns like this one, alongside the provision of lactation rooms at the workplace, breastfeeding mothers will perform their official duties optimally. Imoshobo, Annie Daniels, NTA News. In view of the growing significance of ICT across diverse sectors, including education, the Territory Education Fund will train up to over 2 million students in technical education institutions in the country on online academic resources with the redeployment of board learning platform. This was as the flag of, of the three-day workshop on the implementation of the enhanced Blackboard Learning Management System and Train the Trainer program by the fund. The workshop attracted directors of information and communication technology from the 253 beneficiary institutions of the fund as part of measures put in place to bridge the digital skills gap in universities, polytechnics and colleges of education in Nigeria. Quality and mode of delivery of education across the country under our converged services program. In these interventions, we will ensure that hybrid modes of teaching and learning are cemented once and for all so that the instructors can deliver materials to students, can administer tests and other assignments, track students' progress, and manage record keeping all online regardless of physical classroom structures, among the many other benefits. Tech Fund also confirmed improving its allocation to ICT development in its intervention programs to ensure that the country meets up with the present digital reality across the globe. Still on education matters, Totem Holiday is the longest break that pupils and students of both primary and secondary school enjoy as the longest break from academic activities. In this report, Ahmed Fulani examines how students on holiday can be engaged by their parents or guardians during the holiday period. Mrs. Olutoni Farumbi is a mother of three and was with her kids when I saw them on their way to meet their children's grandmother. During holiday period, she takes her kids to spend time with her mother and travel to other states for sightseeing to prepare them mentally for the incoming academic session. I don't really bug them with academic activities. They just do a little, then they play, they rest, they travel, they sightsee. It is different strokes for different folks, as another parent, Abu Green Oluwatosi, believes the appropriate way to engage their children is to enroll them in summer lessons. So just for a period of three weeks or four weeks. So within the period of two weeks, I think the rest is okay. And the summer class is not for the whole day. It's just like three hours in a day. So they have a lot of time to rest and more time to play. However, to a professor of sociology at the University of Illinois, Ali Abdullah, parents need not to engage their words in formal activities during the holiday, but to introduce them to various entrepreneurship skills to meet with the demands of the 21st century. This is the right time for parents to study their children very well to know what they like, what they love to do. And uh, for those who love to work with the computers, you need to introduce them to the jobs, uh, opportunities of the 21st century, such as uh, software development. At large, parents and guardians are advised to keep eyes on their children and be more security conscious so as to protect them always. Ahmed Fulani, NC News. A two-day national workshop on the development of older person for quality care assurance, true quality guidelines and regulatory framework is on the work in Abuja. Ruth Aguele reports that the National Citizen Center is partnering with the United Nations Department on Economic and Social Affairs for Capacity Enhancement Projects. As for older persons cuts across all stratas, which has consistently raised concerns. 
To address these concerns, the National Senior Citizen Centre has been interfacing with the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs to seek support for the implementation of the national policy of aging through capacity building to promote social inclusion. This workshop with stakeholders is another phase towards integrating quality care standards to draft policy guidelines and regulatory framework towards promoting geriatric care skills for older persons in the country in line with international practices. I'm very pleased to have a consultant of such a high caliber. We will also provide you with an overview of other good practices in other countries, um, you know, what should be taken on board, uh, what we should consider when uh, conceiving, designing, implementing, also reviewing and, and appraising uh, policies that benefit older Nigeria. Nigeria, by this development, is building a paid quality social care workforce and ensuring that the care workers' workforce has the knowledge, skills and competence critical to the neighbor workforce to practice older persons centered care. So now what NSCC is doing in partnership with MBT, Federal Minister of Health and every other agency in this space is to, for the first time, have national overarching standards. We never had that before. And tell us the methods, the mechanisms, the processes, and how we can monitor and evaluate and update. The two days national workshop is expected to integrate quality care standards through practical steps to improve the well-being of all the persons and their caregivers across the country. In Abuja, Ruth Aguala, NT News. With the nation and medical community pointing out on LD diet arising from consumption of packaged, processed, and fast food in urban centers, which is contributing to increase of cardiovascular diseases, stakeholders say the food control chain have made a move to regulate the intake of all processed food and oil in the country. Larry Egbelayi takes a look at the regulations. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, Non-communicable diseases such as cardiovascular diseases, cancer, chronic respiratory diseases, and diabetes are majorly the causes of death globally, especially in low- and middle-income countries. One of the reasons attributed to the trend is basically due to unhealthy diet. For example, in Nigeria, unrestrained consumption of fats and oil is common. Gazetting regulations about food, this time fats and oil, Packaged food is the first step to eliminate industrially processed trans fatty acids from food suppliers with the banning of hydrogenated oil commonly found in ultra processed foods. The hydrogenated oils or trans fatty acids or industrially produced can lead to, they, they are not as soluble, okay, and they can deposit within the vessels, the blood vessels. So they start narrowing down the path the blood is going to be traveling. And once that narrowing starts, blood pressure happens. With this development, enlightenment of the public has to be stepped up to take on the responsibility of examining the content of the packaged processed oils and other food. At the state level, we have established, uh, we, uh, they are, it's mandated that they should establish food safety desk in every Ministry of Health, and then they have a national co uh, state committee on food safety and quality. Then at the local government, the same thing should be reciprocated. Health and dietary experts revealed that Nigeria is the first West African and second in sub-Saharan region after South Africa to adopt these regulatory measures. In Lagos, Larry Bileyi, NTNU. So ending news this evening, let's bring you a recap of our top stories. Early on, we told you that President Bola Tinubu inaugurates Tax Reform Committee. Also, National Assembly forwards screened ministerial nominees laced to President Bola Tinubu. Lastly, correspondents take a look at plight of senior citizens in Nigeria. This ends the news for tonight. Amarolua Eguna. Have a good night. <laughs>